Welcome, everyone. This is the 8th day of October 2018. Um, first, we have a public hearing for Ordinance Number 1512, a zoning map amendment to rezone approximately 30.9 acre parcel located at 725 Old Shelbyville Highway from R1 Low Density Residential District to A Agricultural District. Anyone in the audience wish to address this issue tonight? All right. Uh, we'll close the public hearing and go into the regular meeting of the Board of Mayor and Alderman. First, to the roll call. Ms. Golden. Yes, Mayor Curley. Here. Mayor Pro Tem King. Here. Alderperson Blanks. Here. Duncan. Dunn. Here. Noas. Mathis. Here. Five present. All right, we have a quorum, so we will proceed. Um, we'll ask Dr. Blanks if you would to offer our invitation to lead us in the pledge. Ask the warrant to please stand and remain standing. Please bow with me, please. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for many blessings, Father. We live in a great town and a great state and a great country. Uh, the greatest town in the world, in my opinion. And thank you for continuing to bless us. Please pray that we do the business of this city to uh, your liking, where we are fair to everyone and give everybody a fair shake. Father, be with us as we conduct this business. Um, pray that we're um, leading Tullahoma in the way it needs to be leaded. That, um, we won't leave anybody behind. Father, we um, live in polarized times. Father, we pray that we can all put aside political differences and, and work together more than we ever have before. Father, we know we sin often. We ask your forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Blanks. You're welcome. All right, you see we have a new face that has joined us this evening. I'm very pleased to uh, welcome and introduce Miss Natalie Todaro. You know, I've been doing this a long time, and I'm not sure I've ever seen a resume that's as impressive as this one. Uh, she is, she's a senior from the high school. She has a 4.51, I'm sorry, 4.571 GPA. She had made a 34 on the ACT. She's ranked second in her graduating class of 351 students. She was a member of Girls State. She is a member of Mu Alpha Theta. She's a member of the National Honor Society, the National English Honor Society. She earned the Freshman Science Department Award. She's very active in sports. She's, uh, she was a varsity captain last year and this year for her volleyball team. She's um, earned awards. She's very active in her church, St. Paul's Catholic Church. She uh, is earning her pilot's license um, in, from Smyrna, Tennessee. She uh, has 80 plus hours of private aircraft flight time. She's very active in several organizations at the high school in DECA. She is a photographer and reporter for THS Sports. She's a member of the Spanish Club. Uh, the, she was active in, our, in the basketball team, softball team, and volleyball. She works, or uh, used to work at Chick-fil-A, and uh, pretty amazing. So, Ms. Tadaro, what I did was I put my resume <laughs> and your resume side by side. And I'm pleased to report there was only one um, thing that was the same. I was also in the Spanish club. <laughs> no way. Nothing, nothing else. <laughs> nothing else that I compare to that. So, we're very pleased you are here. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, um, I've lived here for three years. My family used to be in the military and my dad retired last summer. And we decided to stay here in Tullahoma because we liked it so much and just worked for our family. So hopefully my family stays here longer as I'm in college and all that. But as of right now, it's, we love this town and I'm just really excited. This is probably my favorite place to ever live. So. Where do you so, want to go to college? I'm planning on going to Auburn University <coughs> and I want to be a mechanical engineer and 
I know that. Uh, you do know <laughs> that. Yes. <laughs> I've heard well, at least it's in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just Mr. Edwards has told me all about. Oh, has he? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> We're glad, glad you're here, glad you joined us. In a few minutes, we'll ask everyone to offer just a brief report. So if you have anything that you'd like to report on, we'll recognize you at that time. So again, we'll, we'll come back to you in just a moment. Um, will you take me up flying soon? If you like, if you trust I, me. I'll go with you anytime. I'll go with, I, I enjoy flying around Tallahassee. Yeah. Okay, so um, I've got, if you would, stand at your desk there, Mr. Dallo, and we have a certificate that we would like to present to you, recognizing you as the honorary alderman tonight. Happy to stay right oh, here. sorry. Yeah, it's okay. As everyone knows, this is Fire Prevention um, Week, and we have a proclamation uh, that we're pleased to present tonight, and we'll present to Chief Shastin in just a moment, whereas the city of Tullamy, Tennessee is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting Tullahoma, whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally in homes or locations where people are at the greatest risk from fire, whereas home fires killed 2,735 people in the United States in 2016. And um, fire departments in the United States responded to 352,000 home fires. So whereas Tullamy's residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas Tullahoma's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas Tullamus residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take action to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. Whereas the 2018 Fire Prevention Week theme, Look, Listen, Learn, Be Aware, Fire Can Happen Anywhere, it effectively serves to remind us that we need to take personal steps to increase our safety from fire. Therefore, I, Lane Curley, Mayor of Tullamus, Tennessee, do hereby proclaim October 7 through 13, 2018, as Fire Prevention Week throughout the city, and urge all people of Tullahoma to be aware of their surroundings, look for available ways out in the event of a fire or other emergency, respond when the smoke alarm sounds by exiting the building immediately, and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of Tullahoma's fire and emergency services during Fire Prevention Week 2018. So I recognize Chief Shastin for any comments he'd like to make, and I think he has a guest to introduce. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, we're honored to accept that proclamation uh, for Tullahoma, for the fire department. We appreciate you uh, put, putting that out uh, this year. We also like to take serious the words you said, uh, look, listen, and learn. Uh, we, we've given you all some tests in the past uh, and had some questions. That I would challenge each of you tonight that, that when you go home, uh, look around your home if you see any, any fire hazards anything like that try to correct them or call us we can give you some ways to correct them if you, if you can't figure out how to correct them uh, listen listen to your smoke alarm and also pay attention to the year it was manufactured just because it makes the noise when you push the test doesn't mean it's going to work during the fire they need to be replaced every 10 years so don't only just test it but look at the year of manufacture it's written on it and then learn ways out of everywhere you are a lot of people are vacationing this week at the beach. Of course, they're learning how to evacuate the beach tonight because they put a mandatory evacuation in Panama City. But that's some things you need to be looking at when you're going on vacation, looking at two ways out of a hotel, where are the stairwells. Uh, when you're shopping in Tullahoma, as Mr. Blanks always recommends, find, look for two ways out of that building, whatever building you're in. In case one door is blocked, you need two ways out. So look, listen, learn, very important. Uh, message from from the fire prevention council nfpa tonight i have a special guest with me mr jim griffith he's with with the national fire safety council 
and he, he's here to talk a little bit about the Tullamore Fire Department's program, which is a nationwide program that we uh, we uh, respond to. So, yes. uh, yes, sir, uh, Mayor Curley, I, I've heard of you before. I haven't met you, I don't think, but I think you used to work with Martin's Pharmacy, son, and I used to deal with you some as far as that donation. But anyway, it's so good to be with all of you, and good to see you. God bless each one. Well, I've been working with the town of Tullahoma since 1988. I came in back when uh, C.B. Watkins was here. Everybody knows C.B. And uh, but I, I met him at the Chiefs Convention over in Nashville back in 87, actually, when I first began to do this. The uh, National Fire Safety Council, just by way of information, has been around for a long time. They started back in the 60s. And they're the only nonprofit um, organization in the United States that provides fire safety materials as well, and the only one that I know of that provides the service of getting up the money to, to buy the materials. So we, we're kind of unique in some ways. Anyway, I met CB, and uh, he was very interested in the program and said he had had somebody in before that didn't do him right. And you know CB, if you cross him, that's it. <laughs> you don't cross CB. Anyway, but he, uh, he kind of watched me for a while, and then the next year he says, Jim, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try you out. He says, you better not mess up. So I knew I had to do it right, and we've been doing it right ever since. I've been working with you for 30 years. Back in 2007, Chief Shastine came in, and we've been working great ever since uh, that time. And uh, In fact, we got you a new suit. Uh, I don't know if the guys are around tonight or not. Uh, we were able to pick up a fire pup suit. We had get, got me one, I think, back in 2008, I believe. <laughs> Maybe uh, a little more recently, I forget. But here's the fire pup suit. We got you, we were able to get you this. Thanks to your sponsors, we got to give them the credit. But this is fire pup suit, and uh, the kids just love this guy. And uh, I imagine they pull his ears and whatever else they can get a hold of. <laughs> well, on this particular one, they usually can't reach his ears. Oh, okay. Well, he's tall anyway. <laughs> we may have the tallest fire pup in the state. Hey, I'll tell you. <laughs> He's kind of scary to win a suit. But that's a, that's a very good suit. These suits here are the best one we've ever had. We had several, and some of them were made in Taiwan and China, parts of it were. But this is a completely American-made suit, down to the screws. So everything's American-made, very patriotic organization, and we uh, we want you to have the best, and that's why you have this. So uh, give a little fire pump a hand. I wanted uh, to give uh, Chief Chastain and the city of Tullahoma, we thank all of you so much for your participation. <laughs> Tullahoma is a, a good patriotic town. They are behind the program 100%, and the chief and the men at the department do a great job. They go out, as you know, I'm sure you know better than I do, they go out and put up smoke detectors and, and uh, pass out little books like this right here that's got the names of the sponsors on the back. And I wish I could read them all off, but we don't have time for that to thank all these people for what they've done. But you have some folks in town that have been given, I guess, for 30 years uh, faithfully on the program every year, and we do appreciate everybody that helps. Uh, but we want to present him a 30-year award uh, for this program. Thank you, Chief. God bless you and, and the department. Thank you for Tullahoma for being a very progressive town and understanding the necessity and the importance of preventing the fire before it stops. We have a, a, a motto with the National Fire Safety Council, the best way to fight a fire is prevent it. Uh, if you can stop it before it starts, you're way ahead. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it cost a few thousand for the program over the last 30 years. Uh, if you had one fire, it would cost you a lot more than what it cost for this program. And you saved a lot of fires by having it. So thank you so much for your time. God bless everyone. Thank you, Mr. We appreciate your uh, uh, allowing us to do this. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Yes, I'd like to say also that uh, I accept this on behalf of, of our people at the fire station. And I know this is Fire Prevention Week. Uh, some people say Fire Prevention Month, but we practice fire prevention year-round. We go out and do programs year-round. Uh, the, the men and women at the fire department work very hard to prevent fires, and it's been very successful. Our, our fires are way down, structure fires in Tullahoma. Last year, we only responded to 11 structure fires in the city. Uh, and, and that's just unheard of of a town our size and I feel like it's a direct uh, reflection of our uh, work in fire prevention 
Uh, also, I'd like to introduce Melissa Allen. Uh, she's our fire department fire risk coordinator uh, that uh, represents the city and she deals with the state fire marshal's office almost daily on our smoke alarm program. Uh, Ms. Allen, can you tell me how many smoke alarms we've installed this year so far in Tullahoma? 578 since January. Installed wow. 578 smoke alarms just this calendar year uh, in Tullahoma. And those are all donated by a, uh, a grant through the fire marshal's office. And uh, we, we get calls almost daily, if you can believe it, from people that have realized either their smoke alarms are more than 10 years old or they actually don't have any at all. And uh, I'd say a couple of times a month, we respond to homes on medical emergencies or other fire smoke, and we <coughs> find that they don't have any in, in there, so we install them right then. We carry about a half a dozen in each apparatus so that before we leave their home, even if it's a medical call and we, we ask, do you have a smoke alarm? If they don't, before we leave, we install smoke alarms. So it's a very successful program. And doing it along with this National Fire Safety Council program has made Telehome a much safer place to be. So I appreciate Jim. Uh, every year he calls me, hey, we're doing the program again in the spring. You guys and girls support it. We send the letters out and people send the money and it just rolls on every year. So this is a great, great program. We appreciate y'all letting us participate. I appreciate the fire pub being right, here and Miss Allen. Appreciate your work. <laughs> Anybody has any questions? Appreciate y'all's good work. Can I say Thank one you. last thing? I, yes, didn't say. Uh, I just want to tell you how effective this program is. Um, I started back in 87, and I work a town called uh, Decatur. You might never have heard of it. It's over in Biggs County. They had never had any fire prevention programs prior to this, this particular program here. And I know it's hard to believe, but they had a 64% drop in structural fires after one year of it. It's hard to believe, but it really works. And so, you know, those kids are like sponges. They just they just soak this stuff up. So if you can teach them when they're little, that's the way to do it. Good. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> well, we have another visitor this evening, I believe. Uh, uh, Ms. Darren or Ms. Mirda, who's going to introduce our speaker on composting? I can, I can introduce him. Okay. Yeah, you're recognized. Uh, uh, this is Todd King. He's come to visit us from, <coughs> from Franklin, Tennessee. Yep. And uh, Butch and Jody and I had the pleasure of meeting him. I guess, when did we go, Butch? When? Oh, gosh. It's been a while. Five months ago? I know it was April. cold. April. I remember. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's a little air down there. That <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, we were just really impressed with what, what he had going. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank Glad to be here. Very honored to be here. I represent the City of Franklin Compost Facility. We've been operating for 10 years. We have compost everything on about two and a half to three acres. I sound like a lot. We didn't have a compost over 100,000 cubic yards at that time. Over 1.4 million dollars in void costs. Now, what's an avoided cost? It's a tipping fee. We collect mainly yard debris, leaves and bad grass. We'll do about 14,000 yards of bad grass. Our leaves this year are about 2,000 yards of bad grass. But that's not all you can compost. I kind of toured your great town today. Got here a little early. Really just went up down one street. Seen a grocery store, another grocery store being made, and you've got several restaurants going up there. Two pounds per person per day is the average food. The city of Franklin, that's about 32,000 tons. We can't compost it yet. I'm developing a program that can. So there's a need. There's a need for this. How many landfills are being up and around here? None. But how many how is your town growing? It's been decades since I've been here, and I hate to say that I'm dating myself I really now. But your town has grown tremendously since the last time I was here. Progress is growing everywhere. Our town is not is one of the few that's growing fast. So fast we can't keep up with infrastructure. Sure, y'all probably seeing that too. This is where a compost facility comes in at. What we have at the city of Franklin is a windrock facility. They're very easy. There's only two people, me and my operator, since 2008. And in that time, that's what we've been able to do. 100,000 cubic yards. <coughs> you need, if you got a wheel loader or a bobcat, you can have a compost facility. Now we have a windrow turner, we have a screener, but we sell it. We sell our compost at $20 a yard been able to sell about $70,000 worth of compost since 2010. You've actually got customers from Tullahoma, Fayetteville, Northern Alabama, Jackson, Tennessee, Cookville, Tennessee, Putnam, Tennessee, and Southern Kentucky that come all the way down to get our compost. Now that's a great compliment for us, 
But in all honesty, I'm here because there's not many of us around. There's only about four permitted compost facilities in the state. But yet our state is one of the fastest growing states in the South, really the nation. Why? Because we're right in that middle. You can be anywhere within four to five hours. So it's a commerce through state. People move here. But as they move here, dust does what they come. They collect, they debris, the litter, the trash. 30% of what goes in the landfill can be eliminated immediately. 15% is yard debris, the other 15% is food. Now we're working on a food program and a mulch program now. But I love to come to little towns like this. Love to come to anywhere. I've been to Atlanta, Orlando, Baltimore, a lot of places. But this is my home. Tennessee's my home. I've been here my whole entire life. 40 years I've been in Franklin. And that's a rarity. That truly is a rarity. And I love coming to places like this and saying, hey, you can do this. With a little bit of work, two to five acres, you can have a compost facility and diverting material from a landfill. Is there any questions? Does anybody got anything? What is the biggest expense of implementing something like this? Your permitting. Um, there's three levels of permitting for the, for the state. Tier one will be your landscape. Um, you may fall within the guidelines of a permit by rule, depending on what the state says. But then you have tier one landscape debris, tier two is food and ag waste, and tier three is biosolids. Now, don't rule out biosolids. It truly, you can truly make a lot of money and revenue with that. What a lot of municipalities don't see is they see what they generate. Because that's what you know, you have a pie. Just think of your budget, you have a pie. Okay, we generate this. But look at your neighboring towns. None of them have a compost facility either. Sevierville Ten takes in, Sevierville, Tennessee takes in Knox, Sevier County, and Gatlinburg. Why they do that is to help pay for the compost facility. You can actually charge a ticket fee for your surrounding areas to come here and have and compost their material. And then actually they'll buy it on the way out double dipping. But as for your most expense, most municipalities already have a wheel loader or some front end loader. They already have the, equ the equipment, the staff, and the land. It's the permitting, getting the permitting involved. And if you go this route, that's the first thing you need to do is get on with the state, get on board with TDAC, and say, hey, this is what we're thinking about, them. knowing what you're going to compost. If you're going to compost just yard debris, then let them know that. But if you're, going, you're thinking about doing food, let them know that, say, hey, we're going to do food. Where do we need to be? What do we need to have? Well, you need to be in a tier two, you need a non-abrasive pad, which means concrete or asphalt. And then work your way from there up. So how do you how do you collect the, the food? You, do you take it just from restaurants or to households? Well, right now, the way I'm looking at a program, we don't collect it just yet. Uh, there's 80, 83,000 residents in the city of Franklin. And just last year, it was 77,000. Um, that's 32,000 tons of food a year where y'all are probably producing about 14. My site, the new, the new facility we designed, instead of doing windrows, it'll do an aerated bin system. Now, aerated bin system is faster, but it'll do 126,000 cubic yards on two acres, where I can only do 15,000 now. But I'm still not able to compost all the city's food waste. How we would collect it is either outside haulers or we would collect it ourselves. We do have the infrastructure to collect it ourselves, but when you take on that, tackle that issue, you're talking about a lot more trucks, a lot more manpower. We were already collecting the leaves. And that's what gets me. A lot of towns are already collecting yard debris. You're collecting brush. You're collecting leaves. But you're taking it to the landfill. And you can compost it. It's probably going to be ruled out of the landfill within 2025 anyway. So as for us collecting it, we already had it. Now as for food, yeah, we would probably have to do outsource and collect ourselves. Any more questions? Does so, this program pay for itself? Well, that's a gray area in the government now. You know that. I do. Yes, yes, it is. Um, right now, we're saving just with two people. I get everything they're going to go deal. Everything they're going to put on that line to go deal. My loader was going to go on the deals. My bobcat was going to go on the deals. I need my two pickup trucks. So they'll come to me and I'll get them at cost. We, right now, is $165,000 is what we save on here. I don't make that much, my operator doesn't make that much, and our overhead. Our biggest expense right now is 
maintenance for our equipment and fuel. Fuel just keeps going up and up, and it's hard because a lot of in a lot of what we do is I'll budget for fuel maintenance for our leaseback trucks, even though it doesn't come out <coughs> my budget. I'll still budget for it just because I know one day it probably will. Hmm. Yeah. Just we just we compost some, do we not? Do we not compost some? We, we mulch all of ours. We carry it. It's, it's truck to Johnson's right. mulch, and we get claim it as recycled. Yeah, right. right. So we don't we don't bury. I don't believe we bury the yard waste. Do no, sir. Yeah, we carry it. It's, it's carried yeah. to Johnson, and it's turned into mulch. Right. right. The mulch. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're diverting at least that portion. Yes, of it. it doesn't yeah. go to the landfill. Right. Yeah, as long as it's not going to the landfill, you're showing it first. Yeah. But what you're going to see in the future, and what the state's really talking about, is food. You're being really progressive with food and how we can cut food from the waste stream. Now you have post-consumer and pre-consumer. I think a post-consumer is a kid who didn't eat all of his lunch and throw it in the trash can. That's a post. Um, as a composter, that's what I look for. Pre-consumer, if, if we can feed people, that's what I see that going to. I'd really see that go there. That's where you're going to see next. Um, and that's one reason why we're trying to get these little towns like Fayette Point in here, Tom, and even I talked to our city about it. It's, it's going to come. It's going to come really quick. And the one good thing that we had about a progressive alderman, man board, and alderman that we had was they sent around the curve saying, you know what, we're already collecting this, let's compost it. Let's just go ahead and do that. And now we're looking around the curve saying, well, you know what, we're probably going to have to do that. <coughs> What's it going to take to do that? And how are we going to get there? Or biosolids. Biosolids is another thing we're looking at just for the sheer cost of the landfill and it's hauling it. Uh, tipping fee goes up every year on that. And we're Retooling our land, our bile solid facility right now. You do not have to have a grade A compost. You can have a grade B bile solid. You can have a sewer sludge, a certain percentage of sewer sludge on compost. Um, you just have to be real careful how you market that. Another good thing about being down here is you have a huge market potential for composting. Um, I, I hate to say that because y'all still rely on customers. Because I could do have a lot of customer bases that's in this area. They drive all the way to Franklin to get a compost at $20 a yard back huge agriculture those guys are looking for somewhere to get rid of their waste too and that's where that comes from um, think of you know tyson used to have one you know they're in Deckard right now but you've got a big huge agriculture industry here that can really benefit from a compost facility and they would actually benefit it too by using it the product on the end any more questions Mr. King, you've done an excellent job. You sort of, I think, piqued our curiosity is what we can do. Ms. Gunn, uh, thank you very much for your initiative as well. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you very much for coming. I, I, I hope that you guys will get to see just how impressed Butch and Jody and I were to, to go and visit. So, I think. And anytime, anytime y'all want to come down. So, City of Franklin, um, just look me up. We want to give y'all a site tour and see what we do. I'll give you the nipple tour of the dime tour, depending on how long y'all be there. It's good thank to meet you. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Service Moody, can you add that to your list of things to try to get to at some point? And, uh, yeah. I will. Yeah. I mean, we're we're we're, we're yeah we're a very progressive community as well. There's no reason why we can't take the lead on doing some of these kinds of things. Also, yeah. we'll take a look at it. Good. Okay. Thank you again, Mr. King. We appreciate you being with us this afternoon and tonight. So, uh, any comment? Anyone from the audience wish to be recognized at this time? All right, we will proceed. We're ready for board reports. Mr. Mathis, anything to report? Thank you. Yeah, I do. Um, first of all, I didn't have any meetings, but I do have something to report. And I have a job in town with a local business. And uh, during many, many, many times, people will come in there and they want to buy or purchase smoke alarms. And when they do, I'll say, uh, where do you live? And they'll say, Tullahoma. I said, do you realize that if you live in Tullahoma, your fire department will install your smoke alarms? They had no idea whatsoever. And they said, what do we do? I said, you call the fire department, and, they, and if you're in the city limits, then they will install them. And they, they're, they're really appreciative for that, that, that information, and most of them will leave, and then they'll come back later and say, we got it done. Yeah. So that's really, really something. Another thing is, I know that Shastain, uh, Mr. Shastain, he used to come around and bring this little fire, little fire apparatus that you had to put out with a, an extinguisher. Well, the kids would go up there and they'd put out that fire real quick. 
Well, it just so happened it was my time. And he said, well, come up here, Coach Mathis, and you try it. So I got up there and, you know, I said, well, I think I can put this fire out real easily. Well, I sprayed that thing all day long and it wouldn't go out and they started laughing. And I still remember that, Mr. Shastain. But uh, I couldn't get it out. But finally they, they gave in and let me do it. But uh, that's, that's really a neat thing to go around and let the kids uh, uh, see what happens when you try to put it out. It really works well. Yeah. Good. That's all I have. Good, good. Mr. Shastain. Did I get a chance to? Yes. Can you say your my name? name was mentioned. Your name is called. Your name is called, and that's a rule. I, I, I appreciate that, Mayor. It's all about technique. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Black. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Since our last meeting, I had I had a, a Duck River meeting. Nothing. Um, excuse me, not a Duck River, but a TUA meeting. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, you know, it's getting ready to be. Um, all time of the year, hopefully towards the end of the week, we'll have cooler, cooler weather coming in, and maybe we can <clears throat> finish off this walk in the AT Trail on a high note. Um, I don't know if we'll make it halfway through the AT Trail. That's a long, lot of miles, you know. Three hundred miles. But we're getting there slowly but surely. Um, I always like to uh, remind people to shop Tullahoma if at all possible. And uh, I think the, the street light is getting ready to be working out in front of Publix, or is working. It is. Well, it's flashing. It's flashing. So beware that you'll have another street light on Jackson to to negotiate. But it'll help uh, get traffic in and out of the, the new supermarket. Um, and that's all I have. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Blanks. Ms. Keith. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I attended the 41A Festival, and for, I'm sure many um, here did as well, and we really thank the groups that are involved with that. Uh, bringing so many people to our community is very much appreciated. So a lot of man hours and women hours go into making that happen every year. So um, kudos to those groups. Also attended a Blue Monarch uh, fundraiser, and uh, those of you who don't know about uh, Blue Monarch, please uh, go on the website and check that out. It's amazing what those um, people um, up there are doing um, and the women they are helping out and their families um, it's very heartbreaking but uh, the stories are just amazing that group is amazing to, I really enjoyed that evening um, a couple of weeks ago I filled in for the mayor and I presented um, Maddie G Harris her hundredth birthday um, we made it Maddie G Harris in Tallahoma and she and her family were really excited she was a true blessing to me I had not met her before but I knew a lot of her family I went to school with them so it was really nice to be able to go and do that as well and I also had a school board meeting um, last week as well so that's all right thank you Good. thank you Ms. Ms. Dunn. I, I got to visit with uh, uh, Jennifer Moody a couple of days ago, and we talked for a while about different things that we both were, were uh, excited about in Tullahoma, and I don't know that I mentioned recycling. <laughs> <Looking> <laughs> back. But um, yeah, uh, we, we've had the Master Recycling Program was last Saturday, and we've got a couple of people who had attended that are here tonight, so thank you guys very much for, for coming out, but um, I felt like that was a really nice presentation. Um, uh, Annie Clements and Noel Clements worked really hard to get that together, and Andrew Rice um, uh, hosted at CFC Recycling, and that was just a, a really, uh, it, it was a good morning to, to get to tour that and everything. Um, I've got a list of, I guess it's about 20-something pages that Rosemary printed off for me of different businesses and individuals in town who have, are receiving an extra uh, trash bin. I'm about a quarter of the way through, and I've had uh, a lot of folks. It's been very positive, you know. A lot of people say, "Yeah, look, yeah, tell me more about it." So, so it's been it's been good to to, to be able to talk about it. So, but yeah. Good. good report. Thank you, Mr. Darrow. Anything that you'd like to report? Um, well, the Tullahoma City Schools are thankfully on fall break right now, and um, I guess I don't really have any like city issues except that I uh, hiked Short Springs today with my mom and it was looking very clean and nice and I think everybody in the town is taking care of it so it's very good. Good, good, good. I understand there's more and more people using that. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, again, appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. The only thing I've got to report on is that uh, I really appreciate the community pitching in and helping the community of Swansboro, North Carolina, which was practically devastated with 34 inches of rain, you know, back during the, the hurricane. And so uh, uh, 
uh, worked out well. The, uh, the, the materials was filled up, almost filled up a 16 foot long trailer and probably six feet tall maybe or something like that. I'm not sure. Probably 80% full. It was pretty remarkable. So I've talked to the mayor of Swansboro after it was delivered and he was so, so appreciative. So thanks everybody for their, for their good work. Uh, ready for the city attorney's report. Mr. Worsham, please, sir. Good evening. Mayor Curley and my law partner, Mark, Mike Giffen, and I attended the Supreme Court hearing last Wednesday about the liquor by the drink law since been brought by the Colby County Board of Education against the city of Tullahoma. We were there along with four other municipalities that uh, have similar litigation pending before the Supreme Court and the matters were all argued simultaneously, one party after another for the appellee and one party after the other for the appellant. And uh, I came away from that very, very confident as to how our side was presented and the manner in which the justice of the Supreme Court asked questions which indicated they were very, very attuned to the situation and our situation and our position in this matter and although you never can you know predict how a matter is going to come out I don't think that our position could have been presented any better and I'm very pleased about it and I'm very hopeful that we will prevail in that as you might recall as a background item the Tullahoma and the case that we brought was up, our case was upheld by the Chancellor here Chancellor Vanessa Jackson in our local court but then was appealed by the county school board to the Court of Appeals and the Court of Appeals Middle Division reversed Justice Jackson and then we appealed, of course, to the Supreme Court. Whereas the other four municipalities, the <coughs> Eastern uh, court, District of the Court of Appeals, all the municipalities won in those cases. So we were one of five and we were the only part that won, that lost in the Court of Appeals. So we feel like if nothing else, maybe the numbers are on our side. So we'll, we'll know in about six weeks what they're decision is going to be in that case. Do you have any questions about that? The other thing is I reported to you last week, Mr. Greg Sandlin, who's a member of the uh, Coffee County uh, Public uh, uh, Building Authority, was here and presented an issue to you all that I looked into. And I think I hope with Terry Cardell, the county mayor, and I think Mary, Mayor uh, Curley has also had some co conversation with him. And I did some research and I found that there's some misunderstanding about the Public Building Authority on the part of some people. But in fact, the Public Building Authority was, was actually created by Coffee County. The City of Manchester was not a co-creator of that authority. So that Manchester really has no right to have any specific number of members on the Board of Directors. Later on, the Public Building Authority entered into a joint venture with the City of Manchester for the Conference Center. But that's an investment of the Public Building Authority. It is not making them in any way a co-originator of or co-member of the Public Building Authority itself. So I'm going to read from Tennessee Code Annotated how, how the Board of Directors shall be constituted. It's a little bit long, but if you'll bear with me. It says, the authority shall have a Board of Directors in which all corporate powers of the authority shall be vested in and which shall consist of any number of directors but no less than seven all of whom shall be duly qualified electors of the municipality. And the municipality also equates to count in this case. All right. The director shall be appointed by the chief executive officer, that would be the county mayor, subject to confirmation by the governing body of the municipality or the county. So Gary Cordell, the county mayor, has the authority to select and to nominate members of the board of directors of the public building authority. And all they need to do is receive confirmation from the uh, members of the board of directors, which are seven. So this, the, the confusion is that had Manchester and Colby County joined together in creating the public building authority, then there would have been some division of membership so that it should be approximately as equal as they could be depending upon the number of directors that they had. But Manchester was not a co-creator, and therefore, in my opinion, we could enact a resolution, as an example, directed to the county mayor, asking him to give Tullahoma fair representation on the public building authority. Now, he's assured me verbally, and Mayor Curley as well, that he would do that. But until that actually is, I think, sort of solidified in the resolution by the the public building authority itself, or in some manner, I think then we would want to ask for them to do that. because. Theoretically, 
to be fair, you know, Tullahoma's representation should be equivalent to our population in the county in relationship to the entire county. Not just one or two or something, there's seven directors and maybe, and you know, the county, the county members at large can be from outside of Tullahoma and Manchester to make it equal, but this thing about equal, equal approximately equal, it just doesn't really apply at all. It can be, all seven members can be from any place in the county. So, do you want to take Mr. Worsham's advice and ask him to prepare a resolution? I think, so. I think to clarify this, everybody okay with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll prepare one for the next meeting. Ms. Moody, are you okay with that? Yes. Good. Good. Right. Thank you for your report. I, I want to add just a sentence or two about Mr. Worsham and our visit to the Supreme Court. Now, all the years that I spent in the building next door, eight years in Tennessee General Assembly, I never walked over to the Supreme Court building. And um, but I, that easily was one of the most fascinating afternoons that I have ever spent in my entire life, listening and how all of those justices were so engaged in this issue and asked really, I think, pertinent questions and uh, just the dialogue back and forth was, uh, so my point is, I would encourage any of you have opportunity. It's, it's all public, it's all open. As far as I know, it's all open. And I uh, urge you to <coughs> consider going and doing that if you're in Nashville sometime. So, okay, ready for the city administrator's report. Ms. Moody, please. Yes, I would just like to address, I wasn't with you at the last board meeting. I was away in Baltimore attending an annual professional development conference that I go to every year. It's the International City County Managers Association. And I was with about 3,500 other uh, local government professionals at that conference and just want to thank you for your support and allowing me to go and spend that time because every time that I do, I feel like I gain so much just from networking with people all over the country, sharing ideas. There's a lot that we have in common, but there's, there's also a lot that um, we can learn from each other, especially I think um, just listening to some of the people on the West Coast, they have very different issues sometimes than we do in the South and are thinking a lot about sustainability and composting and some of these issues we talked about. Um, while I was away, I know the topic of sidewalks and um, safety along routes to schools was discussed and I wanted to share with you, while we absolutely, we already know in our capital planning and in our projects, we look at sidewalk maintenance every year, we look at opportunities to expand the greenway and connect our existing sidewalks with new sidewalks. Um, but I think this year it's especially on our minds to prioritize sidewalks around schools. And so uh, staff has already developed a report for me to look at where I can see where the existing <coughs> sidewalks are and where the gaps are around schools. And we're going to put together a list of projects along with, um, I've already talked with Dr. Lawson, but as soon as um, Mr. Carter gets on board, we'll also meet with him and make sure that we prioritize along with the school system where we need to make some improvements. And so when we have that prioritized list, I'll bring that back to you um, so you have a chance to see it and make comment on it. But I just wanted to reiterate to you that we will continue to use all of the grant funds that we can, um, but we may also begin looking at some of the bond proceeds to see if some of these high priority projects can get moved along faster. I think you've seen that while uh, especially TDOT grants are very beneficial to us. It can take a long time to see those projects to fruition. Um, so if we can allocate some of our bond funds, I think we can see some of these projects get done a little bit faster. Good. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ready for the consent agenda. We have uh, five items, 18140, September 24th meeting, 18149, approved bids and authorized mayor to execute a construction contract with Coral Construction to complete a new section of sidewalks along Collins Street, Run Street, and Franklin Street. 1850, approved an agreement with Wimberley, Lawson, Wright, Daves, and Jones, PLLC for labor and employment law consulting as needed for a one-year term. 18151 approved emergency repairs to the city stormwater drainage system on Country Drive. And 18152 certificate of compliance, retail food store, wine, all the doing businesses, all the number 54, 2014 North Jackson Street, Tony, Tennessee. Is there a motion to approve the so moved. Second. Proper motion, property second. All those. Okay. 
Who made the motion? I did. Mr. Mathis. Second by Dr. Blank. All those in favor of the consent agenda is presented for a green and post vote red. Motion passes 5 to 0. We have um, two items of old business. First, ordinance number 1510 to consider an ordinance of the city of Tulsa, Tennessee to amend the zoning ordinance, which is ordinance number 1392, by replacing Article 8 non conforming structures and uses with the new Article 8 non conforming provisions for passage on the second of two readings. You recall we earlier had a public hearing on this issue. We approved it on first reading. Is there a motion to approve on second reading? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Dr. Blank, second by Mr. Mathis. Any discussion? All those in favor of Ordinance 1510, vote green, opposed, vote red. Motion passes 5 to 0. Now, this next item, uh, let me explain. Uh, let me read the caption. Item 18112, approve and authorize the mayor to execute an engineering service agreement with St. John Engineering for a five year term. You might recall them. A couple of months or so ago, the motion was made to lay this item on the table. So the first motion is we need to lift from the table uh, to properly have this item before us. So if someone would make a motion to lift from the table. Motion to lift. Uh, motion to lift. Second. Second on this bill. All right. So we're only thing we're voting on right now is the motion to make it properly before us. So all those in favor of the motion is presented. Vote green. Opposed. Vote red. All right. Hold on now, okay. the board. Sorry. Thank you. All right, motion passes five to zero. All right, we now have prop we have properly before us eighteen one twelve. So, uh, is there a motion that we accept staff recommendation? Move to approve. Proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Right, motion by Ms. Dunn, seconded by Ms. Keene. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion to accept the uh, staff recommendation alternative number one authorize the mayor to execute the engineering services agreement with St. John Engineering vote green and post vote red. Everyone voted? Yes. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you Mr. Moody. All right we have uh, six items of new business. Um, is the let me ask a question first is item 18154 is that properly before us or do we need to make a motion to put that before us? It says added yeah. item. Yeah. You will need to make a motion to add Okay, so let's do that now so I don't forget. So uh, the chair will entertain a motion that we place before us 18154 at the appropriate time. So moved. Second. Offer motion by Mr. Matthews, second by Ms. King. All those in favor of adding item 18154 to the agenda of green opposed vote red. <laughs> Motion passes 5-0. Okay. Resolution number 1778. Consider adopting a resolution approving an Urban Development Action Grant, UDAG, loan to the Telmet Airport Authority for construction of the new hangar. This is exciting. Mm -hmm. So um, you'll see that description on page 69 of your agenda. Is there a motion that we approve um, the resolution to approve the UDAG grant? Subject to legal review. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Matthews, seconded by Ms. King. Any discussion? Uh, is this, there was a, a hangar that was going up. I, it seems like we voted on this last year, something similar. Is this a new hangar? Well, it is. Mm -hmm. um, what you voted on last year was approving the initial financing through the uh, Tennessee Municipal Bond Fund for $200,000 loan. Okay. And they just got the bid specs back, so that's why we're doing the UDAG now that we have the firm amount. Okay. So this what's is the same hanger? Same hanger. From, okay. Right. What's the firm amount, Ms. Wilson? The full amount of the project would be 758000 including, um, and that includes engineering, and that includes also a reserve for any undercutting they need to do. What's the, U, what's the UDAG amount? Oh, the UDAG amount is 193000 That's the gap in between the grants and the uh, loan. As you recall, this is the hangar that's going to be used for corporate aircraft. It's all the time. So all the time. All right, good, good. Any discussion? Any more discussion? All right, and all those in favor of the motion is presented to approve. Come on. Vote green opposed. Vote Motion passes 5 to 0. 
Ordinance number 1512, consider an ordinance to amend the zoning map as set forth in the Tele Municipal Code, which is ordinance number 1392, to rezone an approximately 30.9 acre parcel located at 720, 725 Old Shelbyville Highway from R1 Low Density Residential District to A Agricultural District for passage on the first of two readings. Recall we earlier held a public hearing expressed any opposition. It's also gone to the Planning Commission. The Chair will entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Reading. Motion by Ms. Dillon, seconded by... Second. Dr. Blanks. Mm -hmm. um, any discussion? Any questions? I, I do have some discussion. Sure. Maybe Mr. Lawson, if you could come to the podium. <clears throat> this property is out at 130. Um, and it's been posted and um, just wanted to make sure that when we change this from uh, residential to agricultural uh, the purpose of this property I think is for them to have like wedding facilities or, or those for outdoor facilities that outdoor are, facilities yeah it, it'll just be for outdoor events uh, the only thing that's going to be done inside would be like a prepping place for food uh, distribution or, or and then there's restrooms and then, but if they have big events, they're going to bring in portable ones. Right, but the, to, for them to be able to do this, they had to, to rezone this property, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and, and there are some stipulations about time not being too late. And, you know, right, there was a conditional use permit that was approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals, but it's on contention of the rezoning. Okay. But it wanted, does have those regulations like you're discussing right now. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we were aware of that. So, thank you. Under discussion. Nine, all those in favor of ordinance number 1512 on the first of two readings, both green and post vote red. Motion passes five to zero. Ordinance number 1513, consider an ordinance to repeal ordinance number 1496, an ordinance amending Title 20 miscellaneous of the Telemunicipal Code by creating a new chapter 14 Sports Council for passage on the first of two readings. Let me get a motion in a second. I'll defer to someone for an explanation or I can read from the agenda. Motion approved. Second. Uh, motion by Ms. Jones, seconded by Dr. Black. So you see on page 82, on September 10th, 2018, the Board of Mayor Alderman adopted a resolution acknowledging the public benefit of the Sports Council seeking 501c3 status and supporting its establishment by directing any funds directed for the Thomas Sports Council to the new nonprofit entity, the Thomas Sports Council, Inc. As a procedural matter, matter, it is necessary to dissolve the previously created organization through repeal of the original ordinance that established the Telma Sports Council as a committee of the city of Tullahoma. With the board's approval, city staff will bear a funding resolution to allocate funds to a new nonprofit entity on the future agenda to be considered for approval along with the second reading of the same ordinance. So uh, we're just repealing what we did before in order to allow this new entity to be created. We're dissolving one entity to create another. That's correct. Because it better meets the, the needs of the council. Okay. As far as fundraising goes. Correct. Okay. Now, if I might, if I, yes, sir. About this, because I've been involved with this. We won't actually be creating another one. The sports council will be creating a, a private, not for profit corporation under which they will operate once that's been approved. And that will then allow them to go ahead and seek a 501c3 designation so that they will be eligible for grants and be eligible for charitable contributions that will be deductible. So the next step will be for them to file their 501c3 uh, uh, application with the Department of the Revenue, the Internal Revenue Service. And I believe they've already had have their charter for the, for the, uh, for the uh, not the profit corporation. I'll check on that because they need to do those two things before we then adopt the funding resolution that uh, Ms. Wilson has prepared and to enact this on second reading. Was the Sports Council an arm of the city government? No, it's not. It will not be once we repeal. Was it before? Yes, it yes. was. Well, for yes, it was. a couple weeks or in a short time. <clears throat> Let me ask this. Once, you know, and we were going to support them with city funds and taxpayer money. Now that they're going to be 501c3, will we still support them the same way? Or? They will be eligible for support sure. as other not-for-profit corporations every year when we prepare our budget and we make allocations of those different entities. Okay. As well, you might recall that this was precipitated by the very generous contribution 
$100,000 that they received from the family here in Tullahoma. And so that sort of created the impetus for them to move forward, I guess, to broaden their horizons as what they can do in the future. Good, good, good. Thanks, Vice. Better than mine. All right, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion of the first reading of the green and first book? Red. Motion passes 5 to 0. Item 18, 153, approve appointment of Mr. Robin Hill to the Telema Housing Authority for a five year term. So um, you, you see uh, the uh, dis description and the resume found on starting on page 87. Uh, I'm very pleased that this young person has agreed to serve on the Housing Authority, and uh, there's no objection that uh, we're appointing him to serve at this time. And we'll communicate with um, Robin and let them know. Motion approved. Second. I don't, that's a mayoral appointment, oh, so I don't think that's it. Sorry, I stepped on the <laughs> <laughs> Item 18-154, approve and authorize the mayor to execute a contract with the Tennessee Department of Transportation, TDOT, for a joint community transportation matching grant with the city of Manchester, and authorize local matching funds of the $4,989.40 for the plan. We've been discussing this for some time, and uh, so we're simply uh, need permission from the board to take this to the next step. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Papa <laughs> motion, probably second. Any discussion? We ready to vote? All those who vote for. 18154, motion passes by zero. Let's move again to the business. No, right, we'll adjourn and go into the beer board portion of the agenda. We have consent agenda minutes of September 24th, 2018 beer board meeting. Your motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. By Ms. King, second by Ms. Dillon. All those in favor of the consent agenda is presented by Green and First Book Red. Guys, you gotta do it one more time, sorry. All right. Motion passes five to zero. We have one item of new business, 18 DB31, beer application, special event permit, nonprofit, Thomas L. Jackson Civic Association, Inc. Chair of Ms. Colleen Saunders, President for Oktoberfest, President for Oktoberfest on Saturday, October 27, 2018, 404 South Jackson Street, Telma, Tennessee. Uh, if you agree, then we need to make a motion. The motion will include the um, uh, motion to waive the fee. I'll make the motion and waive the fees. Second. Proper motion by Ms. Keene, second by Ms. Dillon. Any discussion? All those in favor, vote green, opposed, vote red. Motion passes 5 to 0. Mm -hmm. Ms. Moody, anything else? Are we good? No, they are adjourned. Safe evening.